Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the next instalment of our series looking through the book of Haggai. And I don't know if you can remember back to your childhood or perhaps you've got kids um, around you now, but I wonder if we could see your room, would it be full of neat tidy cars or, or dolls houses? Or would it be like mine was, full of half-built Lego models and that transistor radio from Granny, uh, almost complete, on the shelf? You see, Lego moon bases and God's temple have something in common. They're started with much enthusiasm, but the going can get tough pretty early on. Last time we left the people of God beginning the awesome task of rebuilding God's great temple. And they were having to do this with little food and with enemies all around. And so it's no wonder that at the start of the second chapter of Haggai, a month and a bit after they started work, they're feeling a little bit down. So let's read Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the rem remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desired of all the nations will come. I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The, go the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace declares the Lord Almighty. And so God speaks through Haggai to give the people encouragement in the midst of their discouraging circumstances. And to see the biggest discouragement, look at verse 4. There are people there who have returned from the exile, who are now in their 70s and 80s, and they remember Solomon's temple. They remember its breathtaking size and beauty. Imagine St Paul's Cathedral, but a golden version. And now they've started to build the new temple in the knowledge that it's not going to be anywhere near as good as the former one. So why even bother? We've been thinking about how rebuilding the temple in Haggai is a picture of the temple that we have today. That is the temple of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and building each of us up into the temple of the church. And like the people in Haggai's time, we too can sometimes look back on the past and think that our own spiritual life, and indeed the life of the church, was a glorious, much better time. Coming from Wales, I know all about this. Uh, nostalgically sighing about how much better things were in the good old days is a national pastime. And over the next few months, perhaps even years, we will face the task of rebuilding and reimagining church life, which may sometimes be discouraging as we look back at what things used to be like. But God does not want his people to remain discouraged so he gives them great encouragement. Let's look at three dimensions of that encouragement, one based on the past, on the present, and on the future. First, the encouragement of the present. God says in verse 4, I am with you. And in verse 5, my spirit remains among you. We thought about this in detail last time, so go back and watch the last video in the series to remind yourself, and perhaps even get the YouTube views uh, into the three-figure mark. Uh, then there's the encouragement of the past uh, in verse 5. Yes, the first temple was the symbol of a golden age, but let's not forget the omni-shambles that God's people have got themselves into before the exile. And more importantly, God's people are always to remember that he made a covenant with them. God has told his people how he is going to act towards them, and he always sticks to his side of the bargain. We too are covenant people. God has made a new covenant with us in Jesus' blood. Let's be clear, the covenant does not stipulate that God is obliged to always sort everything out for us in the way that we like. But God has said that he will always give us what's best for us. 
the full forgiveness of sins because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The promise of God's power living within us through the Holy Spirit and the gift of an unmerited intimacy with God himself. The changelessness of God's covenant promises can be taken for granted when we feel like we don't really need them. But they're a bit like the 999 number. It's not like that ever randomly changes or sometimes if you ring there's no one there. We can take such a provision for granted until we really need it and then thank goodness it's there. When my conscience is weighed down or I'm challenged by my doubts, it's then that I'm so thankful that God's promises never change. So God's changeless covenant promises are a huge encouragement from the past. And there's the encouragement of the future in verses 6 to 9. God says a great future awaits where he will shake the nations and all their riches will come falling out into the new temple. Through Haggai he is saying, it doesn't look like much now, but trust me, it will. Because look at verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. It's not like the riches of the nations actually belong to them anyway. Like all prophecies, this was partially fulfilled in God's timing, even in unexpected ways, with the riches of the Gentiles being brought to Jesus. But the book of Hebrews quotes this part of Haggai, the only New Testament book to quote it. Here the author of Hebrews speaks of a future where God will totally shake the whole universe, referring to the new creation. Then this prophecy will be completely fulfilled, and all the wealth of the earth, both material and intellectual, will be devoted to one thing only, the praise of God. So next time you see an amazing gem or, or piece of jewellery, if you visit the Tower of London once things go back to normal and you see the crown jewels, think to yourself, wow, looking at this is like a little foretaste of when all that is beautiful and precious will be used not to decorate the head of a human ruler, but will be used to praise the one who made it and who owns it and who will share it with us. So look to the future as Haggai did and be encouraged.